Socrates was known as an intellectual and moral godflight of their society. Socrates left no written work, so we only know what student and friend Plato wrote. Socrates is said to have called himself, quote, a god's gift to Athenians, end quote. Socrates' method was often imitated by the young men of Athens. He seemed to have an openly anti-democratic view. Plato also portrayed him as being very critical of some of the most prominent and well-respected leaders of Athens. Socrates also held unusual views on religion. He was said to have made reference to a personal spirit called Daemonion. In 399 BC, Socrates was tried with two charges. Oral corruption of Athenian youth and impiety, failing to acknowledge the gods that the city acknowledges and introducing new deities. At the trial, most diecasts, which were male citizen jurors, voted to convict him of the charges. Then, his punishment was chosen, which was to drink a poisonous beverage of hemlock. I'll get into more detail about that later. Melitus, the accuser of Socrates, considered the evidence and further concluded there was a strong case for his charges. The Archon summoned Socrates for a trial by jury. Socrates and the prosecutor suggested sentences for the punishment of his crimes against the city-state of Athens. Socrates joked and said that he should be punished with, quote, free meals, end quote. After that suggestion fails, Socrates offered to pay 100 drachmae, which was one-third of his property. A fine of 3,000 drachmae proposed by Plato was agreed, but in the end, the death penalty was put into place. When this happened, it was suggested that Socrates should flee Athens, but Socrates refused to break the law. It was said that Socrates didn't even try to convince the jury that he was innocent. Being faithful to his teaching of being faithful to the law, Socrates, at the age of 70, drank the hemlock. The apology is an account of the speech that Socrates made at his trial. It isn't by any means an apology, though. The speech was really called Apologia, which literally translates to a speech made in defense. So, in the apology, Socrates was defending his own conduct. During the most part of the speech, Socrates would speak in a very plain manner. He mentions that he has had no experience with the law, and is going to speak with honesty and be direct about this matter. He said that his actions came from a prophecy by the oracle at Delphi that claimed Socrates was the wisest. Socrates concluded that he must be much wiser than the others because he knows that he knows nothing. In the speech, Socrates explained that he claimed his duty to be questioning wise men and expose their false wisdom as ignorance. This made Socrates very liked by the youth of Athens, but others were very angry, especially the older men. Socrates thinks that their anger was the reason he was put on trial. Socrates proceeded to interrogate Melitus, who was primarily responsible for bringing Socrates to the trial. Socrates' conversations with Melitus seemed to be directed towards embarrassing him, rather than finding out a truth. Socrates stated that, quote, The state is liable to drift into a deep sleep, but through his influence, it can be awakened into productive and virtuous action, end quote. Socrates was offered to go to prison, but he rejected that. Socrates was pretty much just joking around with the jury, and they got annoyed and sentenced him to death. Socrates accepted it and stated that, quote, no one but the gods know what happens after death, so it would be foolish to fear what he doesn't know, end quote. Socrates also told the jurymen who voted against him that, quote, in silencing their critic rather than listening to him, they have harmed themselves much more than they harmed Socrates himself, end quote. Socrates has been teaching the young men of Athens for decades, and up until 399 BC, no one had questioned anything. So, why did it happen? Athenian democracy had went through some difficult periods. During that time, the Thirty Tyrants took over the city's government. Two of the main leaders, Critias and Alcibiades, were actually previous students of Socrates. These attacks against Athenian democracy may have caused Athenians to reassess their views of Socrates. His teaching methods, which once seemed harmless, were no longer harmless. Socrates seemed to be an enemy now. In the writing Meno, by Plato, Anatus said, quote, Socrates, I think that you are too ready to speak evil of men and if you will take my advice, I would recommend you be careful, end quote. Obviously, Socrates didn't take that advice and continued to speak his mind during the trial. In the speech, Socrates said, quote, Men of Athens, I honor and love you, but I shall obey God rather than you. And while I have life and strength, I shall never cease from the practice and teaching of philosophy, end quote. So, to summarize, Socrates isn't going to back down from what got him in trouble. So. Based off what I know, Socrates was a pretty good guy. He had good intentions, but he just didn't follow what was expected of him, which got him in some trouble. 
All Socrates wanted to do was teach students to think outside of the box and question what they know and are taught. According to rules, back when Socrates was alive, I would say he deserved to die because he did go against what he was supposed to do. But if it's 100% my opinion, then Socrates shouldn't have died. In our modern society, we see Socrates as doing nothing wrong when he actually did. Socrates didn't mean wrong, he just was teaching what he believed. Socrates said that, quote, the laws are always just but a law can be unjustly used, end quote. So, Socrates just believed that the laws were there to be broken. Doing so could reveal a truth, which Socrates thought was good for society. From what I understand, Socrates didn't want to have to conform to society. He didn't want to be like everyone else, which can explain why he died. Socrates wanted people to realize their own ignorance, and I don't think anyone liked that. The end of Socrates can leave us to think that no matter what, you should always fight for what you believe in.